Welcome to our Thanksgiving service as we praise the Lord for all of his benefits to us. We begin with our opening hymn, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to, to God, God my exceeding joy. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our, our help is, is in, in the name, name of the Lord, Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us then confess our sins to God, our gracious Father. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, creator of all things, we confess that we are a sinful people. We have broken our fellowship with you and have turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and actions. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We have not lived lives that are counting expressions of gratitude. We confess our sinfulness and acknowledge the hurts we have done. Have mercy on us and forgive our sins. Amen. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for grace. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord keep you steadfast in the Holy Spirit, lead you to a greater faith and obedience, grant you a spirit of ongoing thankfulness, and finally bring you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. O Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, 
and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be, Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, beginning with the first verse. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, 
of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land which you will not, which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Philippians 4, beginning with the sixth verse. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last you, your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned to be both full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now the Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, 
begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day. mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A blessed thanksgiving to you and yours who are watching this. It is our prayer that you gather safely and enjoy the blessings that God has given us with family, with friends, with food, and feasting. It wasn't that way as 
Luke paints for us a horrible scene to begin with. On his way to Jerusalem, passing along between Samaria and Galilee, he entered a village and was met by ten lepers who stood far off. They lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Just in these two verses, we can see the gravity of their situation. Doctors couldn't help. Having leprosy is certainly not easily cured with a little bit of Advil or rubbing a little ointment on. As the disease progresses, it attacks the nerves. Pain would soon turn to numbness. The skin would lose its color, thick, glossy, scaly. Sores and ulcers would begin to develop as the limbs could no longer feel. Around the eyes and the face, they would become disfigured. Horrible swelling, monstrous to look upon. The voice would become hoarse, grating. Those who had signs of this disease were declared unclean, unfit to be with others. Not that anyone in the community would want to be around them, but they were removed from family and friends. Really anyone that didn't want to get this contagious and horrible condition. You were basically left homeless without the support of family and friends. You were considered cursed by God, profoundly impure. If anyone had come near, it was your duty to tear your clothes and to cry out, unclean, unclean, lest you spread this awful disease. It required isolation. Only those who were also infected were allowed to be there with you. This year, probably more than others, we can understand how terrible it is when this sickness, COVID-19, spreads through nursing homes and hospitals, through schools, the general population, everyone looking at others with just a little bit of suspicion as to whether or not they're going to get you sick. Unlike COVID-19, though, leprosy did not clear up on its own. It meant an accelerated death. Jesus told them, go and show yourselves to the priests. If it wasn't the deadly form of leprosy, maybe it was something else it could possibly clear up. They didn't have all of the science that we did. So if it did clear up and it wasn't actually the leprosy that would kill, you could go to the priest to be declared clean. These ten are healed. As Jesus says, go, show yourself to the priest, they began to go. They did what Jesus commanded them. They started on their way. And they were cleansed. Yes, they were healed of this awful disease. All ten of them were cleansed. And the interesting part about healings of Jesus is that they are instantaneous. And everyone is healed. Only one of the former lepers, of course, turned back to thank and praise God. That person, a foreigner, a Samaritan. I find this part of Luke's retelling most marvelous. Because it helps us understand that while things are good, it's easy to set apart these distinctions. Oh, well, I'm Jewish and you're Samaritan. I'm here and you're there. But in the midst of death and decay and suffering and pain, you suddenly realize that the distinctions that we make on the outside have no place. Death cometh for us all. Though he would have been considered outside the bonds of the covenant of Israel, they found solace together. Again, all ten were cleansed. An absolute miracle. Their flesh restored. No more rot, no more sores, no more discoloration. They could again participate and be part of their community. They could hug and kiss and eat and dance, eat with their family and friends. I know for many this year, this is a difficult year, not getting to eat with family and friends. Maybe your loved ones are still quarantined in a nursing home, grandparents not seeing their grandchildren. Most difficult indeed. I think we can resonate with the joy that would have overcome these ten lepers who've really, they've been given their life back. Yet only one turned back to say thank you to Jesus. 
Yes, the one who turned back worshipped Jesus, falling face down at his feet, praising him and giving thanks for the miracle. Of course, it's not difficult to see why the church chooses this particular reading for thanksgiving. Soon, we pray, a vaccine will be widely available for COVID-19. It'll be interesting when it does work its way through our population to see how many, how many will return, how many will be thankful two years, three years, ten years later. That's the problem with human nature. We generally don't wake up and say, I thank you, Lord, for my measles vaccine. I thank you, Lord, that science has given us these wonderful advances. It's easy to grow unappreciative of all that God has given us. Jesus does ask that question, where are the other nine? All ten were healed. Where are the nine? I think that question could easily be adapted for Jesus asking, where's the rest of your congregation? Where's your Christian family? We're not all cleansed by my death and my resurrection. We're not all baptized into my holy name. Is my forgiveness still not available for them should they call upon me and I who am faithful and just? Will I not forgive them? Where are they? Now before we get a little bit too proud of ourselves, tuning in and watching and praising God, the reality is both law and gospel apply to us as well. He could easily ask, is your heart far from me or is it right near me? Is your heart full of thanksgiving or do you grumble and complain? Do you love your neighbor as I have loved you? And if we're being honest with ourselves, the answer is that we're not always thankful. Sometimes we're selfish. Our hearts aren't always in tune with the Lord. We haven't always shown concern for our brothers and sisters, even those who've missed worship services or opportunities to give thanks to the Lord without ever noticing. As I pondered this, I wonder how many of you would not put out a phone call if your brother, who was supposed to be at the Thanksgiving table, didn't show up? Would you just carry on and put the turkey on the table and eat and go, oh, I'm not really concerned about my brother? I'm sure we'll catch up later. The truth is, I don't think any family would do that. We would be greatly concerned. We would try to find out what was wrong, what happened. Is they, are they delayed or are they angry or they, are they not coming? For what reason? But we must admit, too, that our hearts that often burned bright and faith can become cold and unconcerned and very far from our Lord turned in on ourselves. We know that he's our creator, and we know that we owe our lives to him. It is he who gives us our body and our souls, our ears and our senses, our health, our vocations, and all the more come from him. Even our hope of eternal life is bound up in the cross. This year, alone with over 250,000 dead from COVID or COVID-related complications. We know that death is all around us. Even without those COVID cases, America loses nearly 3 million people a year to heart attacks, to cancer, to strokes, aneurysms, and the rest. 56 million people each year die. Knowing death is all around us, you would think that we would strengthen our resolve to be, to be resolute in worshiping the Lord, not let any opportunity pass where we don't give thanks ultimately for his sacrifice for our salvation, redeeming us who are lost and condemned, whose hearts quickly grow cold. He's forgiven us our sins with his precious body, his innocent suffering and death. If we have any hope of being redeemed, it is in him and in him alone. We are no longer our own, St. Paul says, for we have been bought with a price. Therefore, we must glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which belong to God. See, even after we've been redeemed, when our hearts are far from God, we have a good shepherd that seeks us. We can return to him at any time, like the prodigal son, and find a father waiting with open arms to receive us. 
He promises to raise us up at the last day. All of this is why we can relate to the lepers who in Jesus' day cried out with the same words that we often do, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He does, he did, and he always will. Thanks be to God that he does. And we have even more reason to be thankful as his people, for he is merciful and patient, loving and kind toward us, even though we forget at times how much he has truly given us and what he's accomplished for us. Thanks be to God that Jesus willingly went to the cursed tree, having no sin of his own, but rather dying in our place and rising again so that sin, death, and Satan would have no power over us. Thanks be to God that he continues to prepare our hearts through his word and the sacrament ministry so that with angels, archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we can join in singing the eternal praises to the Lamb who was slain. Yes, thanks be to God also that he had you and me in mind when he said, Rise and go your way, your faith has made you well. Indeed, salvation is ours because of Jesus. We see many reasons to give thanks. Indeed, there are many hardships in the midst of the many hardships. We can always find a reason to be thankful to our God, just like the one leper who turned back to praise Jesus. We know that those two simple, two simple words convey so much to the one who gave. We say thank you. Yet the ultimate reason Christians can give thanks and praise to the living God is that he has accomplished our eternal salvation, our eternal banquet, enabling us both now and forevermore to confess Jesus is the Lord of my life. Now, dear Christian family, that truly is a blessed and happy thanksgiving. In the life-saving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, may we all give thanks. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we continue with our catechism lesson. When we think of the reasons why we give thanks to God, the words of Dr. Martin Luther in the small catechism help us to confess those reasons and glorify him as we look at the first article of the Creed which focuses on God, our Father, the Creator. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he's given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, all my members, my reason and my senses, and still takes care of them. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. At this time, I'd like to thank everyone for their continued support as they mail, drop off, or donate to our ministry online. Please join in singing, give thanks with a grateful heart.
Please rise as we continue with the prayer of the church. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, especially on this day of thanksgiving. We give you, Lord, thanks for the bountiful gifts you've given to us. We remember your many acts of kindness to your people through all ages. We bless you for the orderly progression of the seasons and thank you for the bountiful harvest of the fruits of this earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the church, asking that the message of salvation would be joyfully proclaimed throughout all the world. Bless the work of missionaries, teachers, health workers, and all others who share their faith in countless ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the world in which we live and pray for the community of nations. Continue to give us all things needful and grant that we would be good stewards of this earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you for the gift of our families and everyone in them. Help us to be truly thankful, not only for our material blessings, but for the people who share our lives with us. Grant that our homes be places of love and care and our neighborhoods be welcoming sanctuaries for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the faithful labor of people in their vocations. Today, we ask a special blessing for our military forces, those who are stationed at home and abroad, whose efforts to serve and defend this nation in challenging times and who guarantee our safety in times of peace. We remember those whose labor brings food to our tables in this and in every season. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you that your care embraces all people, especially as we remember those with needs, including the ill, the hospitalized, and those who are shut in, especially Catherine, Elaine, Alberta, Ted and Eleanor, Dawn, Ray, Kenneth, Brian, Brittany, Danielle, Sharon, Sandy, Tony, Marcia, Sarah, Rebecca, Sam, and those suffering from COVID-19. We also ask your strength to be with the medical staff working to help those suffering from this pandemic, and also with those who sorrow at the loss of loved ones, for those who are unemployed or underemployed. Help us to find purpose and blessing in assisting those who need care and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, your hear Lord. our prayer. O merciful God, in our thankful remembrance, we recall those who no longer are among us on this earth, who now rejoice in the glorious light of your heavenly kingdom. Grant that we would be inspired by their faithful witness as we look forward to that time when we would rejoice together with you at your heavenly throne, giving you the eternal praise that you alone deserve. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. O oh Lord God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn. Now thank we all our God.
as we conclude with prayer. O Almighty God, you crown the fields with your blessing and permit us to gather in the fruits of this earth. As stewards of your creation, move us to receive your gifts in humble thankfulness and share your bounty with those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for our closing hymn. And at this time, I'd like to give thanks for all of you who have tuned in and spent this time with us, praising God through the uh, wonderful technology of the Internet. God's peace to you and yours. A very blessed Thanksgiving. Your strong arm